Hello and welcome to the news hour. We start with our breaking news story out of occupied East Jerusalem, where at least seven people, including a 15 year old boy, have been killed in a shooting near a synagogue. Israeli medics say several people are injured. A gunman was shot dead at the scene. Shooting took place in the illegal settlement of Neve Yaakov. It happened a day after Israeli forces killed 10 Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. Well, since the shooting, there have been reports of attacks on Palestinians. Five Palestinians have been wounded in Beta. One of them is in a critical condition. According to local sources, they were blocking a road when a settler shot at them. Settlers have also attacked Palestinian cars south of Bethlehem and a farmer near Salfit. Well, the deadly shooting has been celebrated by some people in the occupied Palestinian territories. There were spontaneous demonstrations in Gaza and the town of Ramallah in the West Bank. Dozens of people came out onto the streets waving flags and singing. The crowds formed shortly after the uh, synagogue shooting uh, took place. Well, James Bays is live for us at the scene in occupied East Jerusalem. And so, James, uh, reports that uh, the National Security Minister, Itamar Ben-Gavir, was there very briefly. What is happening at the scene now? Well, he's been joined by Prime Minister Netanyahu, who is here at the scene. Let me just first give you an idea of what has been going on here and show you exactly where we are. Uh, if I just step out of the shot, you look up the hill and you can see two buses up the hill. Well, that is Nebi Yaakov. That is the settlement. That is where uh, the synagogue is located. And that's where, just a couple of hours after the start of Shabbat, the holy day for Jews, this shooting took place. If we come down the hill, you can see the car, the Toyota Corolla, that was used in the shooting. We've been watching over the last hour the police going through that car, looking for any possessions in the car. They've already named... In fact, there was a name that came out earlier that was the wrong name, but they've named uh, the person who was driving the car, the person who carried out the shooting, and they do believe it was just one person that carried out the shooting, Hari Alkom. Uh, he's from the Shoafat camp, which is very close to Nevi Yaakov, uh, located very close because, of course, the geography here is such uh, that an, an illegal settlement has been set up uh, in land that is designated as Palestinian uh, land. Interestingly about the suspect, uh, the Israeli police are saying that they have no security file on him whatsoever, no previous incidents uh, regarding this man. You might be able to hear in the distance that way the bit of shooting, a bit, a bit of shouting going on from Palestinian uh, passers-by. We actually had some Palestinian passers-by here earlier on uh, and they were dispersed by uh, Israeli forces with stunned grenades and I suspect that the Israelis may well move these people on again because as you um, have heard just up the road there right now, not just the security minister, but the Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, who previously, before he arrived at the scene about 20 minutes ago, was consulting with his security chiefs. In fact, you might be able to hear it now, the, st the stun grenades being fired again to disperse the crowds by the uh, Israeli military. Um, Worth telling you, we have, don't have any comments yet from Prime Minister Netanyahu, but we do have um, comments uh, from uh, the Security Minister Ben Gavir. As I show you, I'm just showing you some pictures, and um, we'll show you some pictures where uh, those crowds of Palestinian youths are being dispersed by the Israeli security forces. I think it's worth telling you what. Itamar Ben-Gavir said he's the controversial security minister of Israel, uh, controversial because he is himself a champion of settlers. Um, I think his words are important. He said, we need to react. The situation cannot go on like this. Uh, and clearly, it's a situation in this region uh, in the last 24 hours that is really uh, serious, worrying the international community greatly. Uh, that very deadly uh, attack, Israeli raid that took place, uh, that took place uh, in Janine uh, overnight, 
uh, the uh, bombardment in Gaza, the rockets in Gaza, uh, and as you mentioned, Mariam, in uh, Beta near Nablus in the West Bank, after this incident, and almost certainly a reaction to this incident, five Palestinians there were shot by an Israeli settler uh, and wounded, we understand. Uh, they were standing on the road and they were shot by a settler. Uh, no more information at this stage uh, on uh, their injuries, um, uh, th th but we're obviously waiting for further information on that and waiting further information on what exactly Prime Minister Netanyahu is going to say and exactly who he's going to meet as his visit here continues. And, James, there have been months of uh, clashes that are taking place nearly every night or uh, very often between uh, Palestinians and Israeli security forces, but the raid that took place in Janine was the deadliest and the most serious that has occurred for many years. It resulted in the deaths of nine Palestinians, including an elderly woman. Uh, now comes this synagogue shooting, and then also we've been reporting on a bit of settler violence, but... Also, that happens on a regular basis as well. I suppose there are two things. Perhaps one is uh, concerns about how what the response might be, whether this could be the start of an escalation or some sort of uh, military operation by the Israelis, but then also what it could mean for uh, individual sort of protests and, and settler violence amongst people on the ground. Well, I think we need to listen closely to the words of the Israeli Prime Minister when he actually speaks, uh, which we believe he will do uh, as he is there in Nevi Yaakov. But as I reported a moment ago, the security minister saying that there will be a reaction suggests there is going to be something coming from the Israeli side, and that creates as ever in these sort of circumstances, potentially a spiral. It is a very worrying situation. Yes, the events of the last 24 hours are really um, worrying and grim, but also remember where we are this year. A uh, record number of Palestinians killed at the start of this year on top of 2022. A record number of Palestinians killed in 2022. It's a grim situation. We have this new Israeli government, the most hardline Israeli government in in history, uh, and it's it's difficult to see where things are going to go. But I don't think anyone watching this, any observer, whether they're here on the ground or whether they're observers from the international community, Netanyahu thinks it's going to it was, think, thinks it's going to go um, in in a, in, a, in in a good direction. Uh, just showing you a convoy leaving now. We believe that is the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, leaving from uh, Nevi Yaakov, having completed a quick visit. But of course, for security concerns. He wouldn't hang around for long. Uh, we, we saw, we've seen some pictures of him uh, with his security minister, Ben Gavir. We're not aware what words he spoke, but clearly we're likely to get some quotes from the Israeli Prime Minister, from the press who were, who were there with him, uh, I would think, uh, in the coming hours, uh, which may give us more of an indication. Let me... More of the convoy coming coming down the street with their sirens blazing. This is all part of the security for Israel's leader after his visit uh, to the place, to the synagogue, where in recent hours seven people were killed, uh, including a 15-year-old boy. The, the, uh, the number of people injured has been varying, and, and it's gone down a bit, and that's only because, of course, the death toll has gone up. Uh, but uh, we think three people currently injured they include, we're told, a woman who is critically ill, very, very seriously ill, we understand, uh, in terms of the latest information that we're getting on the injuries. OK, thank you very much. From Occupied East Jerusalem, not far from the scene of that synagogue shooting, James Bayes reporting. Well, Al Jazeera's Ahmed Maher is on the phone now. He joins us from Ramallah to discuss these. I think there have been three incidents of settler violence, one in Beta, another on a farmer near Salfit, and then we were speaking, Ahmed, about uh, also a bit of settler violence south of Bethlehem. Do you have any more information about these reprisal attacks against Palestinians? Right, we, uh, we can say that uh, five Palestinians, uh, at least, were wounded, and... Uh, we got an update that one of them is in critical condition. They were wounded in one incident of settlers' attack 
uh, attacking Palestinian cars uh, near the village of Beta, uh, which is very close to the city of Nablus in occupied, uh, on the occupied West Bank. Uh, of course, the attack follows the uh, a Palestinian shooting uh, in uh, occupied East Jerusalem, in which uh, seven Israelis have been uh, confirmed uh, dead so far. And, of course, uh, as James was just saying, the tensions have been high since uh, the, uh, yesterday's uh, a deadly uh, Israeli military incursion into the Jimmy refugee camp, uh, when uh, nine uh, Palestinians, uh, both fighters and civilians, were killed uh, during the Israeli military raid uh, in the Jimmy refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. And we have seen unrest in the West Bank uh, really intensifying over the last year or so, particularly since that raid in the Janine refugee camp. Are people there bracing themselves for, for more violence, for more trouble? Well, actually, they are saying um, the Israeli heavy-handed approach and the continuing killings, arrests, and raids uh, over the past year in particular will only stoke the uh, cycle of violence and hatred and bloodshed. And they are exhausted because the Israeli raids, especially uh, into the two cities in the occupied West Bank of Jimmy and Nablus, have become a daily nightmare, as we say, and a daily routine. Ahmed Maher, thank you very much for joining us, bringing us up to speed with um, what's been happening there. Thank you.